Hey students, it's Emily Poole. Let's talk all about Unit 6.1, Contextualizing Industrialization and Its Effects. It's been a wild thing to be a European in the late 1700s and early 1800s because Europe had just experienced the French Revolution, subsequently Napoleon's conquest of Europe, and then the fact that things are now being mass produced in a new and almost unchecked way. The Industrial Revolution starts in Britain in the mid-18th century because of its environmental advantages and also because of its economic and political prowess. Due to Britain's ascendancy, which was covered in Unit 5, and due to Parliament's support of Britain making as much money as possible, the textile industry booms and then is later transformed into the iron and steel industries. Industrialization is able to take place in Britain because of its iron and coal deposits, but also because it had a tremendous amount of support through Parliament, because Parliament knew that this was going to make them more money. Britain's favorable political climate, plus its favorable social climate, thanks to the agricultural revolution and a large labor working class who is now living in cities, led to industrialization taking off in Britain, and it slowly started to spread from the islands to the continent. As you can imagine, the Industrial Revolution changed the world. Like, historians think that this is the biggest thing to ever happen in all of world history, and I might agree with that. I could argue that the Agricultural Revolution, that original Neolithic Revolution, might have changed things a little bit more. But literally, the fact that you are watching this on a screen, whether that is a handheld screen, or on like a projector in a classroom, or on your computer, that you did not make, and I like made this just in this little room that I live in in Colorado and you are now watching it. It's all thanks to the Industrial Revolution. So yes, industrialization did lead to the mass production of goods and a rise in consumerism across the world, but it also led to early onset unchecked capitalism, which led to a gigantic wage gap between the factory owners, the factory workers, and then this emerging middle class, this new bourgeoisie. And what does that lead to, students? Say it with me. They are going to fight. Political effects are still simmering throughout Europe as a result of the French Revolution. And in the mid-1800s, in 1848, we see what I like to call the springtime of the peoples, which is a rise of liberal revolutions across the continent. Conservatives are there trying to maintain power, trying to maintain the status quo after the Napoleonic Wars. And these liberals now who are maybe more incentivized after the economic disparities that occurred as a result of industrialization, at least early industrialization, are saying, hmm, maybe we should fight for more rights. New ideologies or isms, as we like to call them in class, like nationalism, feminism, socialism, communism, all emerge in the wake of industrialization. Because y'all, when industrialization first started, when it was unchecked, it was so bad if you were a worker. And over time, through labor unions, through protests, through social organizations, through religious organizations, those ills of the Industrial Revolution eventually got fixed. This is actually my favorite unit in all of AP European history, so make sure that you follow along because it's about to get wild. As always, students, you can do it. I believe in you.